I've used Photomatics Pro before for batch processing HDI sequences, and while it works well in some cases, I always felt it wasn't photorealistic in others. Sometimes I'm not after the HDR look, as I simply want to capture the full dynamic range of the scene. So this is an overview of the process I now will use for my HDR sequences, especially when using LR time maps, which is a program that I use all the time with Lightroom when editing my time lapses for video. In this HDR time lapse capture, there are 1,782 images. We need to know the capture interval between each set of three bracketed exposures so that we can use the auto stack feature of Lightroom to separate all these photos into stacks of three ready for merging into HDR frames. So we'll take note of the first frame of the three bracketed exposure group and compare it to the first frame of the next bracketed group using the information in the metadata. In this case, it's eight seconds. So we'll select all the images in the sequence. Then right mouse click on any image to bring up a menu. Then go down to the stacking menu and from its sub menu, select auto stacking by capture time. I've already batch merged this sequence before. So the last setting I used was an interval of six seconds to give me 594 stacks of three bracketed images to process. For some reason, with my PC version of Lightroom, when I adjust the slider value, it will either take a long time to update the value and calculate the resulting number of stacks based on the interval, or the software will simply freeze on me. I guess that's because I have over 1700 images in this sequence. So you can see when the actual captured interval of 8 seconds was used, it displayed only three stacks. Even when I changed it to seven seconds, it didn't change. But changing it to six seconds gave me the closest value of 593 stacks. To work out how many image stacks there should be, it's simply a case of dividing the total frames in the capture sequence by the number of images within a bracketed exposure set. So we'll click on the stack button and Lightroom will then break up the time lapse sequence into 594 stacks with three bracketed exposures. Now the entire sequence has been broken up into 594 stacks. So the six second interval value for auto stacking by capture time worked perfectly in this case. Before we batch photo merge all the stacks, we need to make sure that the photo merge settings are what we want because when photo merging multiple stacks, we won't see the preview window to change any settings. Lightroom will simply use the last setting used when photo merge was last used. So to check, we will deselect all the stacks and then reselect only one stack. Then we'll right mouse click on the selected stack to bring up the menu to then select the photo merge HDR option which will bring up the preview window to check the setting. What I found is that when the auto align setting is ticked, Lightroom will then crop some of the stacks randomly as it tries to align some of the images which means the frame size isn't consistent when playing back as a video clip during video editing. So I make sure that the audio line is not selected. Besides, a tripod was used for the capture, so there shouldn't be any need for alignment. I'll also leave the other settings at their default, as I'll be using LR time maps and Lightroom to edit the new HDR merged images. So we'll cancel out of that and then go and select all the stacks again. Then right mouse click on any selected stack to bring up the menu. We'll then select Photo Merge HDR.
then a small dialog box will appear, stating that more than 50 stacks are selected for merging. Just select yes to continue, and Lightroom will display how many stacks are to be merged, and then we'll start processing all the stacks. It can take some time for Lightroom to process this many stacks. From memory, the first time took between one and two hours. The other thing to consider is that the new photo merged HDR images will have a much larger file size compared to the original raw file. So make sure that your hard drive has enough free disk space before you start. Because I've already batch merged this sequence, I've stopped it. But once the entire photo merge sequence has been created, I then selected all the new DNG files and copied them to another folder so that I can import them into Lightroom separately from the originals. Once the DNG sequence has been copied or moved to another folder, I will then rename the sequence so that the files are in numerical order for importing to my video editor. For Windows, I used the free program called Bulk Renaming Utility, which is a powerful batch renaming software. Now I can edit the HDR sequence using the DNG files as a normal time lapse sequence, using LR time lapse to help make any smooth transitions regarding the exposure, white balance, and so on. Because the DNG image file size is so large, it can take LR time maps some time to load and read the sequence's metadata, a lot longer than normal, so a good time to grab a coffee or have a break. Once it's been fully loaded, you can then create and save key transition frames within LR time maps, which can then be edited in Lightroom. When the key frames are then edited in Lightroom, the metadata of the new edits are saved back to the file. Then LR time lapse is used again to reload these keyframes to then smooth out any key changes. Finally, we can save the updated metadata from the LR time lapse back to the sequence. Going back to Lightroom, the metadata is loaded back into the Lightroom sequence ready for exporting to your desired format for video editing.